On October 5, 1996, in a small town in Green Bay, Wisconsin, tragedy struck. Nah, I'm just kidding. My older brother, Eric, was born. Growing up, Eric had many different interests and hobbies. For starters, he was obsessed with frogs and toads. He would collect all things frogs. I once even counted the amount of frog decor in his room, and it was over 246 items. Yeah. He then switched over to architecture, building things out of Lego, sand, snow. That is a half of one of the many igloos that he would build for us yearly. Traveling was another one of his big obsessions. He's been to so many countries all around the world, and thanks to that, his phone is now solely in German and his music taste is now primarily for an artist. However, out of all of his interests and hobbies over the years, the one that stuck around the longest is his love for history and antiquing. Technically, we, I already had my first antique and I, I, uh, we didn't know it. My grandpa passed away. He left a bunch of stuff from his childhood. And as a child, I would go into the basement and I would climb all over uh, dressers and boxes full of antiques. And I didn't even know what I was climbing on. Um, but as I got older, I got smarter, and I realized the value of all this, um, and the historical value to the family as well. Um, but the first antique I probably legitimately bought was a coin at an antique store. How many antiques do I have in total? I would say probably four or five hundred. I don't know the exact number. Um, I can I can tell you that I have calculated the amount that I've spent on antiques, and it's it's somewhere between three and four thousand dollars. My favorite antique that I own, I can't choose a one thing in particular. I have a few that I that I really like. Um, the first was um, a book that was printed about the Titanic disaster and it was printed in 1912 immediately after the Titanic sank. Um, it's a commemorative edition. I also have a um, gem roller organ. It's an old music player. Uh, that's the easiest way I can describe it. The, the weirdest antique I've ever bought, and there's a few items that come to mind. I've bought blood letters from the uh, Civil War, Victorian era. Has anything that you've ever bought been haunted or given you an odd feeling? I, I moved to Virginia for an internship. One weekend, I went to this little antique store in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Uh, and I bought a book that was printed in 1840. It was called Hinton's History of Baptism. And I put it on the windowsill in my room. And the first night, it was like 2.11 in the morning. It was a weird time like that. I'm, I'm one of those people that I need to see it to believe it. But I woke up and I was just so paranoid. I felt like I was being watched. It was the worst feeling and I had to sleep with my light on. I, I was not in that dark room. Sure, okay, it's a fluke thing. Well, the next night I woke up at exactly the same time with exactly the same feeling. And that second night I was, I was done. I said, nope. I put that book in between a bunch of Bibles and Himmels in my room and I haven't had a problem with it since, and I refuse to move it. Even if it is legitimately haunted, and it wasn't just that I had a, a weird coincidence, there's, there's a history behind it. If, if there's something about that book that gave me that experience, there's a reason for it. Uh, there's an event that occurred, so it's important. After sharing a few more spooky stories, we decided it was time to take a trip of our own. We decided to take a trip to one of Eric's favorite antique shops in all of Arizona and take a look around with him. I, I had a period of time where I went for cameras, a period when I went for coins, and more recently it's been books. But as far as time period, I generally won't buy anything that was made after the 1940s. Telling if an antique is authentic, depending on what it is, is very tough. Antique photos or paintings, a lot of times you can tell if the painting or the photo is fake based on how the ink leads to the paper or if there's a reprint notice in the corner. But it's very difficult. I've made many, many mistakes buying fake antiques. It, it's a learning process. You learn as you go. It, it would be hard to narrow down to one thing. He's got uh, 
uh, World War II memorabilia that I think is really cool. He's got some music and musical instruments. Uh, He's got uh, medical devices that he's purchased. He's got tons of old books. So it's really hard to nail, nail it down to one particular item. So I think it started with the coins and he started to see a lot of things, but his grandfather, uh, Jim, had a lot of old farm equipment, that uh, little hand tools and things like that. I think that kind of piqued his interest in seeing those types of things in, in the antique shops. You know, I like walking through the antique shops with him. It's always an education. Uh, I like the old cameras. There's a lot of old cameras around. There's old magazines. You know, I hate to say it, but old records. You know, when I was a kid, I'd like to see. So yeah, I, I like looking at a lot of stuff. Um, there's a couple things that I've purchased over time, but uh, this is really Eric's uh, passion. When I hold an antique and I think about the history of the antique in my hand, it really depends on the antique. It's very interesting to think about where the things I own have been and what they have done to impact the lives of other people. Whether it's medical equipment that by our standards today was essentially a torture device for someone in another time, um, such as a blood letter or if it's something like a Mosin Nagant, which was captured from a German armory, you know, implying that it was captured during a battle after a surrender of Russian soldiers. It's chilling almost to think about. And sometimes I wish that we, we had the technology to be able to hold on to an item and see where it's been. But at the same time, sometimes I am thankful that we don't have that technology because I think that some of the things that we run into in antique stores and curiosity shops, I, I don't think people would be able to wrap around their heads around the trauma of these items. I think it would be too difficult to own some of them. History teaches us not only what happened, but what could happen again. And there's the old saying that history always repeats itself. Whether we want to believe it or not, history repeats itself. Wherever we were a hundred years ago, we will undoubtedly be in that position again someday, whether it's tomorrow or in a millennium. So it is very important that we remember these, these things, we remember history. It's so important for people to understand their heritage. You have to understand, if, if you're sitting here watching this documentary right now, you had relatives that had to have survived world wars, civil wars, plagues. Uh, I mean, just, you have to imagine the Black Plague, for instance. Uh, only, it, it took out, it took out like a third of humanity. And for us to be sitting here today and not appreciate that our relatives lived through that um, and not have any care in the world for who our relatives were. That's absurd to me. Cherish the past. History holds a lot of really good moments and a, a lot of really bad moments. And I think that sometimes people, they have an ignorance to the past because of where we've been and they hold a standard now because of where we've, we've come to. Uh, but the reality is, is if we do not acknowledge history and we don't remember history, we are always essentially doomed to repeat it as the quote goes. Um, it was great talking with you. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. My name is Eric Zelikowski. For some reason, my sister decided to risk it all and put me in this documentary. Okay. 